Yo, what's going on guys? I'm Sam. Hope all of you are doing great today. I got iOS 13 in hand. I made a video the other day showing you guys over 50 hidden features and changes. And today I wanted to follow up with a second video in that series, 50 plus more hidden features and other changes, some cool stuff that I've found in iOS 13 so far. So if you're excited for that, drop a like down below. It always helps me out and I appreciate the love you guys have been showing me lately. And of course, hit subscribe so you stay up to date on everything happening with iOS 13. Let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so up first, if you have a non-3D Touch device, you now have 3D Touch functionality. Now, obviously, your screen is not pressure sensitive, so you just press and hold in a ton of different places on the home screen on icons, on links to preview things, and well, it looks like you have a pressure sensitive display. Also new in iOS 13, the 3D Touch UI, especially when 3D touching on links or text, has a new user interface, and it looks really nice. It sort of blurs everything else out, and pops up like this. I really like this design. Next up, in some places on iOS 13, in addition to there being a redesigned screenshot UI, you can now take full page screenshots, especially in places you'll notice it like Safari, where you can scroll down a little bit and see the rest of your document. This is really cool because before you would have to use third-party apps to stitch screenshots together. Now, if you wanna annotate or even just capture an entire web page, you can do that now. Now, I know by now most of you already know about the brand new volume heads-up display. It looks so much better. It just slides over on the left side of your screen. Now in iOS 13, I just discovered this the other day, it is actually touchable. So you can drag it physically as well if you wanna turn the volume up or down. At the very top as well, volume pops up and then speaker is down at the bottom. In Safari on iOS 13, there's a brand new icon right here. It looks like a lowercase a and a capital A. And when you tap on that, there are so many new options. So you have bigger text size accessible right here in front of you. You can always show the reader view if you want to. You can hide the toolbar, request the desktop website. And also what I think is very, very cool, you can now make default settings for some of your favorite sites. So if you always want Google to access your camera microphone location, you can have that always denied, always allowed, or ask every time. Ask is probably the best option for most people. But also request desktop website automatically or enter reader mode automatically. So if you ever wanna do that, it will remember these settings so you won't have to do them each and every single time you go to visit a site. Also in Safari on the iPhone, there is a download manager. We thought this one would be exclusive to the iPad, but uh, yeah, you can download literally anything you want directly to your iPhone now and then save it in the, in the iPhone or anywhere else inside the Files app, which is pretty cool. I cannot believe that they've just added this one as well, but yeah, download anything on your iPhone now and it's here, just like a computer almost. And inside of the Safari preference panel in settings, if you go all the way down here to like advanced and then experimental options. Obviously, because this is a beta right now, Apple has added some new ones. Some may stick around for the final release version of iOS 13, but one that I thought was pretty cool is the like force HTTPS slash automatically request HTTPS. And there's a lot more here too. If you're a developer, this is gonna be right up your alley. Also in the Safari preference panel, you can now set tabs to automatically close. If you're one of those insane people that leaves your tabs open all the time, uh, I definitely run into that myself more frequently than I'd like to admit, you just get in that groove of like open one or two web pages a day and never close them out. Developers in iOS 13 can now record multiple cameras at the same time. So what that means is that if you wanted to make an app where you could record the person's face from the front FaceTime camera or the true depth camera, but also record high quality video from the rear facing camera, you can do that now because Apple has officially added support to do so. So I'm interested to see what developers do with this one. And it could make for some interesting apps, like maybe you could film or vlog yourself while also vlogging the people around you. Inside of the revamp files app in iOS 13, you now have the hidden ability to scan documents directly to your phone using iOS's really incredible native document scanning technology, which is a little bit frustrating because I just bought a third party document scanner. It's rendered useless now because in the files app, you just tap on these three dots, tap on scan documents, and just like this, it will automatically capture the document. And there's even filters you can put on this. It's really, really cool. And I, I appreciate the fact that Apple has just made this standard for everybody. Inside of the music app, I know it took Apple a few years to add this one, but whenever you go to add a duplicate song to a playlist, instead of Apple just, you know, being cool with that, Apple Music is gonna say, hey, you've already added the same song. You probably don't wanna do that. I know Spotify has had this forever, but you know, it may have taken longer than we'd like, but it's finally here in iOS 13. And going right alongside that, Siri and third-party apps are gonna get along a lot better when it comes to music, meaning that Spotify, if they update their app properly and have 
Bowl allows all this to happen, because I know there's some controversy there, you'll be able to use Siri to play music, your own music, from Spotify when iOS 13 launches. The Photos app got some major changes in iOS 13, but one of the coolest ones is that if you take a number of live photos in quick succession, they will sort of turn into a video of sorts. So instead of just reliving that like, I don't know, a second and a half video or three second mini live photo video, it's gonna stitch them together to give you a much longer piece of content that you can look at for a little bit longer and maybe capture a moment in one photo that you couldn't have seen in another. The hell that used to be messages search in every version of iOS has been majorly upgraded with iOS 13. I would argue it might actually be usable. Look what happens when you do this. It'll pull up contacts that you might want to talk to or look through. Also, separate links, your most recent ones at the very top, then your photos. And you'll also notice this little microphone icon up here. I've seen it in the Messages app, I've seen it in Music. I think Apple's trying to let you know that text-to-speech is not only better, uh, I've heard it is more accurate, and notice it maybe ever so slightly picking up things better in iOS 13, but you can use it, although it does seem a bit redundant to have the microphone in the bottom right-hand corner. Inside of the News app, there used to be a Love option or like a Show Less option. That has changed to Suggest More or Suggest last signified by a thumbs up or a thumbs down. So hopefully that does make it more accurate. For security and data privacy inside of iOS 13, there's a cool new option that allows you to only let apps request your location each and every time they need it. Before it'd be like, I think only while using the app or always, now you can get a notification every time an app wants to see your location. In iOS 13, there's a new option that by default, if you have an unknown caller trying to contact you, you can have that silenced all the time. So rather than a random number, you know, you're at a work meeting, you need your phone off silent for the important stuff like contacts calling, but you want it silenced for everything else, you could do that. If you have an unknown caller trying to contact you, just flip that toggle and you'll be safe from now on. If you have an iPhone 10, style device or even one of the new iPad Pros with Face ID, unlock in iOS 13 is up to 30% quicker than before. For me, uh, Face ID has always been pretty responsive, but now it does appear to be ever so slightly quicker. Although 30%, at least in beta one of the iOS version I'm using now, feels to be a little bit dramatic. Also in the Messages app, you can now set an iMessage profile picture and name. So this is gonna be really handy if you ever ran into that issue where every single contact on your phone had it two white letters over a gray silhouette. That's not gonna happen anymore. Also with this and contacts for iOS 13, or in the Messages app as well, you can now set custom and emojis for your contacts. So if you had all the spare time in the world, if you wanted to, technically you could make a certain an emoji character for pretty much all of your contacts, or at least the important ones that mattered to you. iOS 13 and Messages also introduces dual SIM. So rather than one being associated with iMessage and the other one being green, both can be run through iMessage simultaneously. In the relocated update menu inside of the App Store, you can now delete apps directly from here rather than always having to go back to the home screen or the settings app and then delete it through there. Bold text located under display and brightness no longer requires a short restart of your device. For as long as I can remember, if you wanted to turn on that setting, you always had to restart your phone. And then if you wanted to turn it off again, you had to restart it again. Now it changes just like that dynamically on the fly. So if you want bold text at one second and not at another, you can turn it off really easily. In Safari on the iPad, you can now enable YouTube picture and picture. I know this is a feature we have wanted absolutely forever, but because it's the desktop version of Safari on the iPad now, more or less, go to YouTube. I don't know, find a great video from youtube.com slash iUpdate. And now look at this. I can close out of the Safari app and play a YouTube video just like that. The design of the iPad toolbar right here for using Apple Pencil or marking up a document has been redesigned. It looks really incredible. We've already seen that, but there is a hidden option in here. If you tap on this icon that allows you to auto minimize it and then scroll through the tools and the colors in a little bit of a different way. I don't prefer this just because it gets so incredibly tiny, but if you're working with a lot of content on your screen and you want this to largely stay out of the way, you can basically switch between tools, drag it out, and then it will auto minimize whenever you are finished. CarPlay in iOS 13 has also received some major updates. I don't want to go through most of them now, but just know the interface is so much better. Here's just one screenshot from Apple's site. It looks so great. Like it was already great in the first place, but the new UI makes maps more clear. 
apps more clear, music more clear. Jumping over to Control Center, the QR code icon toggle has been redesigned in iOS 13, but much more important than that, there is now native integration inside of Control Center just like this. So when you tap on it previously, it would take you over to the camera app. Now everything happens right inside of Control Center, which is extremely cool. The widgets on the home screen in iOS 13 got a very slight revamp, and for a little bit I was like, how do you actually expand them? There's no more show more icon or button that has been refreshed. It's much more simple now, just a little arrow that will turn down to expand. Instead of Wi-Fi settings, there are some new options that you can configure. Instead of ask to join network, simply having a toggle next to it, you now have the option for off completely, notify, or ask each time. There's also a new auto join hotspot option option, never ask to join or automatic. And what the uh, hotspot option does is allows your device to automatically discover nearby personal hotspots when no Wi-Fi is available. Now, I think that's kind of weird to have on an iPhone because it can be its own personal hotspot, but for other devices like an iPad or a Mac, that could be really handy. Next up, there's a new look whenever you grab the scroll bar on the right side of your iPhone. Maybe you didn't even know you could do that, but it's been around for a while. It just turns more bold on older devices of iOS. You couldn't even really tell if you were touching it properly, and it seems to actually work better in iOS 13 too. The share sheet in iOS 13 has been redesigned, and my favorite part about it is that it now knows that I like to airdrop between my iPhone and my Macs relatively relatively often. I'll take a photo of something, I'll airdrop it to my Mac for a video, and almost every time I've seen the new share sheet, it automatically suggests out of the gate that I should be airdropping before I share with anyone else. It'll also suggest other contacts you might want to share something with. Apps in iOS 13 now have the option for you to select the default language or preferred language for reading a certain app. So maybe you're trying to like learn a different language, you want to get some practice in some apps but not others, you can go into the Apple Store app for example or pretty much anything else and it will show you all the language that a certain app supports. Inside of the Maps app on iOS 13, whenever you are en route to something or somewhere, you now have the option to share your ET and it will automatically suggest right off the bat which contacts before anybody else you may want to share with. But of course, you also have access to your full contact list. Uh, so that's going to be really handy for me. You know, I'm going to be honest, sometimes I tend to relate to different places. You also notice in iOS 13, the Maps app there, there is a new star rating system. So rather than it showing you the stars like written out one, two, three, four, five, it'll have one star always and then the exact star rating directly next to it. Instead of the clock app at first look, I didn't see anything new in iOS 13, but there is a new UI now for timers. It looks like this which I'm actually a really big fan of, looks very aesthetically pleasing, but also there is your timer finish time stamped right there. So you'll never have to wonder like, okay, so it says 37 minutes, now let me do the math. It will directly tell you back in the iOS 13 messages app if you want to delete messages from a conversation or forward them to someone else. Rather than having to do a complicated method like you did last year, you can simply take two fingers and then double tap and get this. It's really simple. Heading back to the photos app, you'll notice that your live photos and videos now autoplay. And when they were showing this on stage, it was really cool. As I've started to use it, like trying to see the exact start of a video from start to end has been kind of challenging, honestly. So inside of the settings app under the photos preference panel, there is an option to disable that. One of the coolest features hands down in iOS 13 is the fact that PS4 and Xbox controllers connect your device right out of the gate. You can literally go to Bluetooth and set it up within seconds. You will see battery status in the iOS battery widget. So if you want to know exactly the status of your iPhone, your watch, your AirPods, and now even your PlayStation Xbox controller, you can do that. Inside of AirPlay settings, I've noticed this a lot, but also in a number of other places on your iPhone, like in settings, the stock check mark design has changed a little bit. Seems to be a bit more rounded rather than squared off like it used to be, and it doesn't add any functionality, of course, but it is a little tweak that I wanted to point out. It's kind of cool. Like Apple really paid attention to the details here. In music, Apple added this incredible new live lyrics feature. Again, something that Spotify has had for a while, but I really really like Apple's implementation. Back in the settings app, there is a new legal and regulatory page. Used to just be regulatory, now Apple has moved some of the legal stuff in here. Regulatory is retained as well though, but there's just a lot more detail you can see. There are many more menus. Wi-Fi in iOS 13 supports higher security standards, now up to WPA3. I don't know a lot about the new like Wi-Fi codec and standard, but it is here, so if you have that like really high security Wi-Fi, your iPhone will support it with iOS 13. Screens Time on iOS has also been updated in the main way, now allowing you to set communication limits. Now, I know if I was a kid, this would drive me absolutely insane, but you can now set uh, exactly when your children or whoever you've, you've 
tormented with this feature, uh, communication limits, when and when they cannot try to talk to other people. The Shortcuts app is now pre-installed on your iOS 13 device. Yes, it is deletable if you were curious, but what's cool about the iOS 13 Shortcuts app, I never really had a use for it previously, but now there is a dedicated automation tab, which is a very interesting concept. Basically, if you wanted to, if you have a ton of HomeKit devices, you could uh, set up your iPhone through shortcuts that like, let's say every time when you walk in your house, music could turn on, your lampshades could go up or down, and also like lights could go on or off or set a certain color temperature. Instead of settings, there's a much newer modem firmware in iOS 13, it's up to version 1.50 now. So if you have had issues, hopefully getting better in iOS 13, really hoping they don't get worse because I know some iPhone XS and even I think XR users are still experiencing cellular issues to this day. While I thought iOS 12 was going to be the end of Game Center and iOS 13, it has made a small comeback. There are some new features here, especially the more prominent ability to like set a profile picture and also choose a username in Game Center settings inside of the settings app. And also there was an initial UI that I saw that just looked really nice when I opened a game for the first time on iOS 13. And rounding out this video, there are new significant formatting options inside of the Mail app. Not that you couldn't do like bold, italic, underline in the Mail app before, but the breadth of options is much wider. You just have greater control, granular over everything, and I think it looks really fresh. Should make email on not only the iPhone, but also iPad OS more serious. So that is gonna wrap up this video. I know this was a big one, but I wanna hear your thoughts about this down below. Do you like iOS 13? Are you excited for it? And are you ready to try out these features on your device? Which one's your favorite? Let me know down below. I've been Sam. Hit like if you enjoyed it, subscribe for more, and I will catch you all in my next video.